This is the first of a multi-video uh, series on finishing bassoon reeds. This particular series is based upon an article I wrote uh, titled The Pedagogy of Finishing Reeds for the German System, Heckel System Bassoon. This was published in the Double Reed and later republished in Scrapes. First, I'd like to start by just uh, making the listener aware of some excellent resources that are available for constructing bassoon reeds, and a few of them actually deal with finishing bassoon reeds. The journal article by Heinrich, J.M. Heinrich, is available on the IDRS website. This is an excellent article, presents a lot of very good material. There are two classic books, I guess you could call them, that have um, been around for many, many years and that have been helpful for many bassoonists. And I'd like to just uh, give them to you. Uh, Christopher Weitz's uh, Bassoon Read Making Book, A Basic Technique, and Mark Popkin and Lauren Glickman also have a fine book. There's another very interesting book by Mark Eubanks called Advanced Read Design and Testing Procedure for Bassoon. Uh, it's a very innovative in its approach to reed making involving all sorts of different testing procedures that are very interesting to consider. Uh, Gerald Corey uh, continues to provide a lot of information for bassoon reed makers. He has a videotape out. This is his uh, Nockenhauer Parallel Trim Bassoon Reed Explanation. He's also uh, very soon coming out with some new materials. And perhaps the, uh, the most comprehensive book on the market today about Lou Skinner's Theories and Techniques of Bassoon Remaking, written by James Mackay and others, are available on the website, is, are available in book form at least as well. Many of my students and I have uh, taken some very careful measurements of bassoon reeds, and we provide these on the web with pictures and measurements. You can go to the idrs.org site and look at that website. For example, there's some close-up pictures of the tip. Uh, you can see the lay of the reed. They're carefully labeled by reed maker with the measurements as well and you can have a look at this bassoon reed project and I encourage you to do so. Uh, many of the reeds in the bassoon uh, reed project are taken from articles that I co-authored with some of my students. Uh, we've got a collection of uh, John Miller's reeds that were measured, other reeds by uh, North American bassoonists, and uh, contra bassoon reeds, even a few oboe reeds on occasion are, are part of these measurements. These are all available on the web. Now, I want to get started on this particular article, and I want to talk a little bit about what led me to write this article. When I examine many of the fine materials on bassoon reed making, I notice that three-fourths of the uh, articles, three-fourths of the books, a lot of the material deals with the construction of the bassoon reed, and very few articles or books deal with the finishing process. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that the construction of the bassoon reed can be done in a very objective manner. It's based upon measurements, upon the appearance. There can even be a sort of recipe approach. If you do this, 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 then you'll get this result. Unfortunately, with the cane material being so variable, though once you have your reed that's close to the finished stage, you need to have a subjective approach to that. You need to play on it and make decisions based on how it feels, what is the resistance like, what is the response, what's the sound. Uh, how does this read relate to the concept you want for a bassoon read? So we're dealing with subjective criteria and these are more ephemeral. For instance, if you want a darker sound, if you want a louder low register, you want a more dependable high register, what is it you need to do? And this article will be addressing some of those issues, and it's my hope that it will give you some concepts that will be very helpful for your read making. Well, in order to set the groundwork for uh, this series of videos and this article that I've written, we need to go through some terms. And in fact, this first video deals with a lot of these terms and basic concepts that we'll need to know. 
So here's some basic terms of the bassoon reed. This particular bassoon reed is not to proportion, and in fact this article does not deal with me measurements at all. And so uh, please just, uh, you know, as you look at these, don't plan on measuring that. If you need to have measurements on bassoon reeds and things, please look at the internet sites I've already provided. Uh, starting at the top, we have the tip of the bassoon reed. Um, this, these angled corners, uh, let's refer to as the wing of the bassoon reed. There's a very critical center in this, this area of the bassoon reed that uh, we term the, term the heart of the reed. And that's very important for the, the tone quality and, and its vibrational characteristics. Um, these, these sort of alleyways here are important things we'll be talking about a little bit later. later. Uh, we have the spine that goes down the center of the reed. On the sides of the reeds, we have what we can call the rails of the reed. Uh, then as we get, this is all part of the lay of the blade. As we get to the tube, you notice we've got a collar. Uh, many, many bassoon reed makers leave a little bit of distance between their first wire and the collar. There are some uh, bassoon reed makers that don't make a collar at all. Uh, this is more typical of the uh, type of reed we're going to call sloped or pyramid, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, first wire, second wire is twisted on the, the other side, and the third wire is usually um, covered up by a Turk's head or some other wrapping on the bassoon reed. There are some reed makers that even add a fourth wire in this location. I want to talk a little bit, uh, we're going to talk a bit in the article about the concept of a ratio. So if we're talking about a measurement of the uh, thickness of the spine versus a measurement of the rail, that's the ratio we're talking about. If we're talking about a heart to maybe a wing ratio. That's another ratio that I'll be talking about in this, in this particular article. So if, for instance, the spine is, is 2 and the rail is 1 in terms of thickness, then we have a 2 to 1 ratio. If the spine is 2 and the rail is thicker, say 1.7, then you've got a 2 to 1.7 ratio.